asked for it. Here it is. It's a podcast from Apathetic Enthusiasm. Coming to you live from Sleepyville, California. Completely unrelated to this episode, but definitely related to staying awake and podcasting with my best friend, Travis. I should sleep more, but this is more important. This is Interdimensional RSS, the unofficial Rick and Morty podcast. Good morning, everybody, or good evening, or uh, welcome back from a mid-afternoon nap. Well, however you're enjoying this podcast, we're so happy that you're here. Hello, everybody. My name's Travis. Hey, everybody. My name is Brandon, and this is a fantastic day it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be high energy high impact kind of well like aerobics rested, mm -hmm. yep. it's just so focused on exactly what we're going to talk about which is of course rick and morty the anime well yeah Intermetral rss we are we are almost half i mean we are halfway through the season uh for rick and morty the anime so glad that you're here if you're new to the podcast if you're checking us out for the first time thank you thank you for downloading thank you for watching if you're watching online uh, if you want to get in contact with us, ask us a question or anything like that, you can do that in all sorts of ways. You can follow us on X, uh, at Rick and Morty Pod. You can follow X, us on Facebook. X, X. Uh, Facebook.com slash Rick and Morty Podcast. Uh, Rick and Morty Podcast is our Instagram, and you can send us emails at Rick and Morty Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, oh, that's an old link. We're not, we're not going to say that link. Uh, <laughs> we, are, we are scouring the subreddits. Uh, you can find us on Reddit either at the uh, official Rick and Morty subreddit, rickandmorty.reddit.com, or on our subreddit, rickandmortypodcast.reddit.com. Uh, and then finally, you can get video versions of the podcast over at youtube.com slash apathetic enthusiasm. Big thanks to everybody who is uh, watching the videos over there. Um, finally, final finally, because I already did a finally, so this is the final finally. <laughs> uh, big thanks to our patrons at patreon.com. Uh, patreon.com slash apathetic enthusiasm where you can find uh, bonus content including uh, video post shows that we record after every podcast that we make uh, you can also catch uh, brain uh, I'm let's just face it it's it's video of Brandon's crotch let's face it's, it it's there it's there <laughs> let's call it what it is a uh, little video of Brandon uh, having having a beverage malfunction uh, prior yeah, yeah. to our podcast last week. Yeah, let, let's let's talk about that real fast. Uh, talk, speaking of my crotch, there's my there's my <laughs> oh, phone. Oh, giving from, it away for free now. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Not even uh, behind the paywall. And also, there's there's Look my, at all of there's his, his login there's my... information. <laughs> uh, what you what you may not notice in on my desktop is no keyboard. That's right, uh, because did you I break spilled... the keyboard did you, when you <laughs> spilled stuff on it? Yeah, I, I went to log into my computer and I was like typing in my password. Like, it, it keeps being wrong. Uh, it's because my keyboard no longer processes the right side of the well, not all of them, just most of the the, the buttons. So R, it doesn't work. That was one of my one of the characters in my password. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll admit uh, hold it. Hold on, I gotta take notes. Hold on. As a matter of fact, here's the characters Stop of it. my password. All right, we're gonna that just work. I'm gonna cut you off right there, Bridget. <laughs> Uh, any, anywho, anywho. Yeah. Other, uh, so I need to get a new, uh, get a new keyboard, but I'm also like, kind of like, uh, like an old school seventies rock star where I'm like typing with just with my right hand on the, <laughs> on my laptop. Like, like, do you feel like you're a radio producer? Who's like, who's like, you got, you got your board there. You've got, you got the monitors. You're listening. Oh, I got to ask for it. Here it is. It's a podcast from <laughs> apathetic enthusiasm. <laughs> And we got uh, traffic and weather on the eights. Stay tuned. Uh, honk, honk. Yeah, yeah. Brandon's weather. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, maybe we'll good. do. Uh, maybe we'll do a morning drive. Uh, radio shock jock bit for our post show. So, so go to patreoncom slash enthusiasm if you want to see that post show. Um, yeah, how 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 you doing? You feeling feeling rested, bud? Yeah, I could probably I could probably stay up for another like hour. Ooh. Uh, all right, good. I've got, I've got more. I've got more energy than a a a, a busting mule from Cincinnati. Who? That is a reference I get. Uh, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. Uh, well, if that if we have uh, a shelf life on your, uh, I don't know, tiredness, uh, then let's go and get into our first segment. A segment we like to call semi pertinent news. 
news coming to you coming to you all right uh that's right so my pertinent news coming to you uh, today we've got we've got a lot of we got a lot of special news for you um this one I got I got to tell you Travis this this semi pertinent news it's it's pretty it's pretty pertinent to the the main show Yeah. But I've got a little bit of FOMO. I I won't I won't lie to you. I got a lot of FOMO. I got a lot of FOMO. Yeah. Oh, show. Uh now we we've been to WonderCon. We've been to San Diego Comic-Con. SDCC as they say, but as there's something there's something special happening this year at NYCC. That's right. Not your Comic Con. That's kind of what they're saying. It's yeah, your, not your Comic Con. Not not your Comic Con show. Yeah, that's right. Adult Swim's Rick and Morty season eight sneak peek is happening there uh, with, with yeah. everybody, man. Yeah. So in New York next month, if you have your tickets for New York City, uh New York Comic Con, uh Adult Swim has done has made their announcements for for their panels, things that they're showing uh for that event and as as excited as we were to to be in the Rick and Morty anime panel at San Diego Comic Con sounds like the fans in New York City are are getting quite a show uh the Adult Swim Rick and Morty season 8 sneak peek uh, mm. is, is going to be happening on October 17th that's a that's a Thursday 4:45 to 5:45 real mm. real simple time to remember Thursday at four forty-five, <laughs> and a nice, a nice even time. We all, you know, we I think they call we, that prime time in New York. I think we always do it on the on the quarters. That's that's when we set up. That's right. Main, that's main. that's the way to do it. Uh, they are going to be celebrating the return of the global phenomenon, Rick and Morty, with exclu- with executive producers Dan Harmon and Scott Martyr, friend of the show, uh, as well as voice cast uh, Harry Belden, Ian Cardoni, Sarah Chalk, Spencer Grammer, and Chris Parnell. I'm telling you, the whole Smith family is there. Uh, yeah, and they're going to be diving into the uh, upcoming season, which sounds super fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, I I'm super thrilled about it. For the people that will be there, mm, yes, we yes. are not going to be the, those those people. No. But ho- hopefully that that sneak preview immediately after they show it, they release it to to the masses because I I, I think the masses of Rick and Morty fans are ready, willing, and anxious to see what new content will will come in 2025. I I, I agree. Any any other. Uh, impromptu without any warning that I was going to ask this uh, predictions or, or things that, that you're hoping to see uh, out of this, this presentation. Mm, maybe, maybe some guest star that maybe that's something like, okay. like giving a hint for guest stars that are going to come in, in the next season. I, I just want to, I just want a season eight date. Oh yeah, that's the only no. thing. Like, yeah, obviously, I want clips, uh, sizzle reel, if you will. Um, but if they could announce a date for season eight, I'm here for it. I would, yeah. I would love that. So, um, I want to hear, yeah. I want to hear Dan Harmon say they're drawing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, and then and then Steve Levy's behind him, just like being like, soon, it's happening <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> soon. Yeah. Um. Uh, if if you are in New York for for the Comic Con, um. There are, Adult Swim's doing other things, not just uh, the Rick and Morty panel. Uh, they're also doing a sneak peek and a Q and A for Lazarus. Uh, this is uh, this is another anime uh, coming to Adult Swim. Uh, Jason DeMarco, friend of friend of the show, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he'll he'll be there. Uh, Joseph Cho, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yep. I think uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll call him a friend. I mean. <laughs> Like I, we'd say hi if we saw him. Yeah, uh, yeah. acquaintance, 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 of the show. Uh, uh, a friend of a friend of the podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and then another thing that they're going to be doing is uh, another Adult Swim Night of New screening. This is something Ooh. that they did back at San Diego Comic Con, out at Adult Swim Fest on the Green Pirate Party, uh, whatever it was called this year. Uh, but they'll be doing another one of those uh, out in New York. So. If you are in New York for a Comic-Con in October, 
Uh, make sure you check all those things out if you're an Adult Swim fan. Um, and let us uh, let us know what you think of uh, the panel, maybe, if you go at, uh, you know, 4.45 on Thursday. <laughs> Anxious to hear what you what you what you think. Uh, if you do, uh, we said the links are at the top of the show. Send us an email, Rick and Morty Podcast at gmail.com. Hit us up on X, Twitter, or or Instagram. Shoot us those yeah. notes. And and odds are we will get some sort of press release immediately after it happens. So we will definitely be covering and breaking down everything that we hear about the panel um, on an upcoming episode. That's right. All right, Brandon. What else you got? All right, of course. No episode of this show would be complete without the Reddit post of the week. This one is brought to you by Chaos Reigns. Uh, it's supposed to be like Chaos Reigns, but it's R-A-E-N-S. So Reigns. It's clever. It's well done. The, the title seen. is, <laughs> no notes. The title is First Page of Jerry's Book. Uh, this post got 2.5 thousand upvotes. And it is a screenshot of Jerry's book, season six, episode six. Um, now they they spent way too much time zooming in and trying to pause at the right moment so they could see exactly what is written in Jerry's book, which they did. They did the work for us. Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna read it to you, fine listener. Now some people think books are only written by great men and women. They think you have to be brilliant to write a book or be good at sports, or host a talk show, and to say that, oh yeah, want proof? Well, what are you holding in your hands? A book. And you're holding this book because I am sitting down right now, and I'm writing it. And I'm not very good at sports, and I'm not a talk show host, and a lot of people don't think I'm brilliant. I guess I should tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a family man with two beautiful children. I also have a wife. Her name is Beth, and she is beautiful just like my children, but in a more sexual way to me, unlike my children. In a way, I'm a grandfather, but that is something I don't like to talk about. And that's my family, so let's begin. But where should we begin? We should start where all things start, at chapter one. Welcome to my book. This is exciting. If you like it so far, turn the page and read chapter two. Not your right, my right now. Okay. Uh, that's there, there it is. That's you know what I love so much about that is how much time, uh, how much nonsense and and comedy is baked into that image that most people will never even appreciate or see because it goes by so quickly uh, in the show <laughs> yeah i i really like the in a way i'm a grandfather but that's something i don't like to talk about <laughs> poor morty jr poor morty jr poor naruto yeah uh, double double grandfather <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Neither uh, one is embarrassing in any way, any way nope. whatsoever. Uh, all right. Well, there you have it. That is the Reddit post of the week as well as uh, our semi-pertinent news. If you see a semi-pertinent Rick or Morty news, Rick and or Morty news story uh, that you think we should cover, send it to the social links and we will cover it in an upcoming episode. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it for that. Uh, when we come back from this break, then we will be diving into season one, episode five of Rick and Morty, the anime. That's family. Uh, so stick around. We will be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for listening to any ads that you did or did not receive. Um, thank you for your patience. We're glad you're yeah. here. And, and, <laughs> and, hope, and hopefully Brandon did his due diligence and put the correct time i went through and i explained to jeff earlier over lunch uh, why he is getting the ads at the wrong time and i went i went through a, a collection of situations where i have messed up uh because i have not been diligent in the, in the past so if if you hear any mistakes uh it's purely the the fault of redcircle.com and definitely not Brandon Cruz. Way to, way to throw oh. our hosting service under the bus. Uh, <laughs> just like we'll do with so many other things in the next segment that we like to call the main thing. It's the main thing. Ha ha ha. The main thing. Ha 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 ha.
<laughs> you know, you know what's funny is, so so when I'm recording, what's funny? I, what's funny, funny, Travis? <laughs> I have. I have two copies of our faces on my screen at any given time because I have the actual window where our chat is happening, and uh-huh. then I have the streaming software that I'm using to record it. So I have my face like in the center of the screen, and then two Brandons on either side. And when you're going ha 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 ha, like you're moving in perfect <laughs> unison, so it's like a weird Brandon choreographed dance. All Interesting. Right. It's great. Interesting. It's fantastic. I love it. Uh, all right. This episode is uh, episode five of Rick and Morty, the anime, called Family. Family. Uh, the air date was September 12th, 2024, written and directed by Takashi Sano. The synopsis, the official synopsis, according to Max, uh, Jerry does something bad, or maybe it's good. So now the Yakuza are after the Smiths. Very good. Very I, good. I, I I think it's interesting that they're not even sure what's going on in this episode. Maybe it's good. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, the Bernopsis uh, that, that you put together, Jerry is a hero, bruh. But which Jerry is it, bruh? <laughs> uh, very, very Con- good. Very Confusion good. is consistent with both with both synopses. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So. I don't know what what were your initial thoughts on this episode, uh, having having watched it so diligently, Brandon. Um, yeah. So, so Thursday, no, no, let's strike that. Friday, Friday thirteenth. This this oh, this spooky. last this last week, I was I was waiting to watch one of all of the Jason movies, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna wait for my my kid and, and Chelsea. Uh, they're in. A, they're not they're doing their own thing. So, you know what? I'm going to watch uh Rick they're and Morty the anime. Out camping Camp Crystal yep. Lake and just <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, K- uh Crystal Lake Research Facility uh if you're watching Jason X. And they they were they they weren't around. So, I started watching the episode and then then they came home and then I got distracted. So, I didn't finish watching the episode then. And I didn't have a chance to finish watching the episode until today. And uh, so that's just, that's Brandon's history of when he watched the episode. <laughs> um, that's good. That's, that's I, good. That's good information because it yeah. sets the scene for, for the rest of our podcast. Yeah. And I saw, and I saw Green Day and Smashing Pumpkins on Saturday. I uh, went down to SoFi Stadium. Uh, we meant to go see Rancid, but, you know, we, we were trying to get cheap tickets and so we did one of those things where we didn't buy tickets ahead of time. Uh, me and my buddy Justin, we went down there. Like we're gonna get tickets, but we wanna. We heard that tickets go down a lot, but like after the show starts. So that's what we did. We we walked all the way to SoFi Stadium without having tickets, and then we got to one of the security guard points, and she said, "Do you have tickets?" I'm like, no, we're buying them right now. Like, oh, well, the you know, you probably want to go over there because that's going upstairs. And we said, no, we're supposed to be here because this is where the floor is. She's like, oh, look at you, floor seat people. Uh, so this episode of Rick and Morty, the anime, <laughs> Jerry, uh, I it, this is one of the episodes that it feels episodic. It, it, it feels the closest thing to a Rick and Morty episode primary uh, that that we have this entire season of, of the show so far. I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the focus on, on Jerry, the fact that Rick and Morty have a little Rick and Morty adventure, all kind of, all kind of lead into that, lean, lean into that. Oh, this is right. That That's right. It's Rick and Morty. Yeah. Even, even just the, the way this episode opens with the family at the breakfast table. Yeah. Right. And and having some some banter and and some, and some dialogue while sitting around the table at breakfast feels very Rick and Morty. It feels very much like many other Rick and Morty episodes have opened. And, and there are parallels throughout the episode where where I feel like it t- touches back or ties back into um, uh, the original Rick and Morty in, in some ways, whether that's through cameos or other things. Um, but then there's also other parts of this episode that feel very distinctly like the anime and and i think um so it doesn't feel like they're just putting 
like that anime skin over a Rick and Morty episode, they, it still feels like it's like it's its own thing. So, um, yeah, yeah, and and the fact that it's a Jerry episode, like that's that's huge. Like we we have talked many times in the past that we have uh, appreciation for Jerry. Um, in some ways, we see ourselves in Jerry. <laughs> uh and 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 he's a he's a lovable loser uh and sometimes he's just a, a loser loser um but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah. um and, and that's you, you, one t- of- you talk you travis you talk you talk about us finding ourselves in jerry a little bit and i gotta tell you somebody was parked in front of my house the other day for like two days in a row and the whole street is empty there's no one no one's parked anywhere else on the street but somebody is like parked directly in front of my house with their passenger door leading directly to like the walkway that goes to my front door. And I'm like, why are you parked there person? Why, why is it my house that you're, par-? even if, even if they parked five feet further down the street, it may still be in front of my house, but it's not directly in the path of my walkway. It's very frustrating anyway. So I feel Jerry in that, in that moment. Um, what I liked about this episode was it felt very cameo heavy too, uh, with uh, Nimbus. Nimbus shows up. Yeah. Cronenberg Jerry, uh, who the last time we saw him was when he was killed by Rick Prime, uh, and really, really emphasize this. This is the first time that we've seen Jerry and and Cronenberg Jerry, right? Because they, they they'd never met each other before. Um, gosh, I feel like there was one scene maybe not i i ah, yeah i'm not sure i don't know because because morty and summer go back yeah to to the cronenberg timeline but i don't i don't know that jerry ever has yeah yeah and so i i think that's a really good way to juxtapose uh yeah. to compare the two characters of what it's like for jerry to be quasi competent uh versus still his whole Jerry self. Yeah, and, and we really get kind of almost like a, a triad of Jerry's because because it seems like there's three distinct versions. You have uh, your Jerry Jerry, right? Your your C one thirty seven, your um, kind of loser, unemployed, um, hanging out around the house into his hobbies type Jerry that is lacks confidence, lacks um, you know just motivation in a lot of ways then you have that cronenberg jerry who is a survivor he's strong he's independent he's take charge he's 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 motivated and then and then we we are introduced into like this other form of jerry that is is sort of what we ultimately figure out is what happens if rick was to get his hands on jerry to be able to to train him to to sculpt Jerry into a superhero through some rather interesting uh, different processes, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we get like this superhero Jerry that is stoic and uh, sure of himself and and confident. Um, yeah, and it's and honestly for me, <laughs> I, I talk about which Jerry is it, or uh, I was I was confused at times because of time jumping again. Like, which Jerry is this? Is this the original Jerry from the beginning of the episode? Is this a different timeline Jerry? Um, oh, this is the anti-Jerry, like, maybe. Uh, and so th- those sorts of things kind of got confusing for me as I was watching the episode. I, I don't know how you felt about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the question I have for you is, by the end of the episode, did you know who was who? I believe so. Yes. I'm okay. Okay. Relatively good. confident. I did. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Because uh, I don't. And um. But what I what I was you mentioned the anti Jerry. That was another aspect of, of this episode that felt Rick and Morty. Yes. Where yes yes, yes. where it was it's <laughs> where there was kind of the the tongue in cheek breaking the fourth wall bit of we don't have time for that. Uh, yeah. We're going to the antiverse, but the animation's not going to be backwards because it's too expensive. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, one of my favorite bits of the episode was like that that fourth wall break because it felt like one of the first times I think that we've seen that in the anime. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. um, yeah. So 
I don't know. I don't know. I I mentioned I'm confused by the which Jerry is which Jerry. Um, but you know they they go on. They Cronenberg, <laughs> uh, Jerry, and and our I'll just say classic Jerry uh, are visited by a nice little uh, <laughs> like creature from the Black Lagoon ish creature, um, which takes us into the, the Mr. Nimbus piece, which we already brought up, Mr. Nimbus. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, well, it, that sort of revolves around the idea of the sword, right? Which uh, we see the sword that ends up, I think, teleporting Cronenberg Jerry to the regular Jerry's world. And then they're, but like Jerry's passed out. And so then Cronenberg Jerry has been like slaughtering minions for, uh, for a while while he's taking a nap. Uh, but like this, the the origin of this sword, like this is another thing that I feel like I've seen a couple times where we're introduced to an item or an artifact or a concept or or or, or a character in this show, well before we're given any explanation of like where it comes from, why it's there, what it's for, what the attributes of it are. Um, so there's just a glowy sword that teleports him. And then for some reason, Mr. Nimbus is interested in it. And then like halfway through that, I think we, I think we get a flashback as to where it came from. Maybe. <laughs> um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Nimbus is not interested in having the sword. He's, he is, he knows that the sword is going to cause problems. So that's why he's sending assassins out to, to get it, to stop it. Yeah. Uh, Obviously. And and he figured that Rick was going to take care of business, uh, Richard was going to take care of business, uh, which he eventually gets a gets a call or text uh, as he's drunk hanging out with the family, like, oh no, <laughs> damn it, Jerry, get get out of my stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. Ultimately, he just wants the fighting to stay on the land, not yeah. not to, not to be a concern of the undersea people. Um, he does still control the police. So he's, he's he, he he can take care of business if he needs to, um. But I think it was cool to see a, a version of Nimbus, and uh, I don't know. I it was a it was a neat cameo for for this episode. The other um, cameo, I guess, uh, is the entire Yakuza Japanese <laughs> crime syndicate, uh, which kind of comes out of nowhere, in in my opinion, and and I feel like. Having rewatched the episode now a couple times, I'm still not a hundred percent on like where that like what this ha like we haven't seen any of these people before in any other episode. By the end of it, their leader is like trying to restore two factions and then wants Morty to be his successor. <laughs> and like there are just so many things that I'm like not getting i don't know did any yeah. of that make sense to you <laughs> <laughs> uh no we there's there's backstory that we are clearly missing uh with with the yakuza story and like is is that his daughter the the one the one lady who's like kind of hitting on jerry uh, yeah like she seemed like a daughter maybe but then also like she was the the new leader of his faction when he was in jail, maybe I think like she took over for uh -huh. that half because like it starts off with <laughs> the guy at the sunglasses and he's like, ah, oh, Jerry Smith. And then it's like flashback to when he is younger and he encounters superhero Jerry Smith. And I was like, Oh, okay. It's a time travel thing. Because, like, that's totally the thing that happens all the time in anime. The Rick and Morty anime is the time travel stuff. So so maybe this superhero version time traveled back and now he's – oh, wait. I think I'm formula – I think I'm putting it together as we talk about it. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, walk, 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 walk us through it, Travis. Because the whole Yakuza thing happens in the antiverse. Right, it's when the Smith family goes to the Antiverse that they get in this whole big fight with a bunch of Japanese mobsters. So, and the Antiverse is the is the version of reality that superhero Jerry lives in, mm -hmm. which he became superhero Jerry because he was pathetic, 
and then Rick train him up, and then he becomes a superhero and takes down the Yakuza. Splits the factions, denies the woman a kiss. All of these things happen in the antiverse. Mm-hmm. And, and because the antiverse is going one way, right, and then the other universe is going the other, that is the convergence of the two of the two yeah, verses. I just don't remember how he got all <laughs> angry about Jerry Smith at the beginning. Ah, anyway, that makes sense. That makes more sense. So this is all happening in a different version of reality in the same dimension. Um yeah, perfect. Great episode. No notes. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds it sounds like you you have everything. We want we all want to thank you, Travis, for Yeah, you're welcome, everybody. Very, listening. very clearly listening. explaining what what was going on. It all um, happened in the antiverse. All of the Japanese mob yakuza stuff happened in the antiverse. It make including the superhero it. Jerry stuff. All of that's, that's anti Jerry. Got it. Yeah, but for some reason, there's also a superhero Jerry suit for the regular Jerry, but he's kind of fatter in it. It makes sense. Yeah. Also, mm. there was like uh, <laughs> Morty's Mindbenders elements where they like yeah. wiped yeah. wiped his memory. He, right, and then at some point in time, Jerry thanks Rick and was like, "Let's thank you for the opportunity." But this is the hard hitting preparation <laughs> and and analytical thinking that you come to this podcast it's 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 hard it's it it is it's hard yeah because it, it is everywhere and there is there it it uh, dense is dense the the word there's a lot of there's a lot of things a lot of factors for the episode and i don't know all of what ties into all of everything else Here, and, here's, here's what i'm gonna so, say and yeah. maybe it's because i'm getting older um I appreciate nonlinear storytelling. I I I love movies, TV shows that use that as a tool to creatively tell a story or show you parts of a story in in a different order. That by the time they show you, they if they were to sh show you in chronological order, it just it would ruin the effectiveness of the story or something like that. Mm -hmm. like, movies like. Uh, what was it, Memento or something like that, where it's yeah. like you, the whole movie's in reverse, and it's super confusing for people, and I really appreciated that because I thought it was a creative way of telling the story. The nonlinear storytelling in some of these episodes, it's I'm having a hard time following it sometimes, and it, it legitimately takes me a couple times of watching it to be like, okay, all right. This timeline goes with this one, and it's this. C and I think it's just the way it's no fault of the creators necessarily. I think it's just a different creative process and the way that, like, it jumps between scenes, but it'll jump between scenes and timelines and dimensions and realities. Like, and I'm like, oh, okay, wait, which ver version of G <laughs> which version of Rick is this? Yeah, and is it? Is it the same version of Rick with the long hair that we've seen before? Or is it another one? And I'm so I, I, I admittedly get confused sometimes. Um, yeah. But as as I talk through it now, I'm like, okay, that that all makes sense. It all had to do with the antiverse, which was basically another dimension. Um, I, and yeah, I don't know. Do you get it? I I think I get it. <laughs> Uh, I, I watched Tenant one time and it was, it was also very confusing. So it's not that it's not that it's bad. It's just that I, I, we're just I have, to, I have to put a lot of, a lot just, of, just a couple of Jerry's. Over <laughs> I have to put a lot of extensive thinking into it. Um, so like the, 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 the mind benders aspect of it, you know, I think, I, I think that is interesting. Uh, maybe, I, maybe a little shoehorned. I, I think I don't necessarily know if we needed that to understand the rest of the episode. Here's here's what I'm curious about, because you talk about this feeling like more of like a bottle episode or like a, a self-contained storyline. Um, I'm wondering if this actually plays out 
in in future episodes or 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 in additional things right where does this sword is somehow tied back to that alien race that we've seen in the first four episodes uh l is still around and there's a cover-up right rick gets everybody together for a picture again at the end of this and then morty's mind blowers them and and wipes their memory right so they forget everything about what's going on with the sword. And then post credit Stinger, he also mind blowers the the superhero Jerry and makes him forget all about being a superhero. Does that happen before? Does that happen before with actual Jerry? Is that um does that Jerry just go back to being a normal Jerry Jerry? Uh and 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 now Rick has Rick is the only one that knows about the sword in the family again because he's he's wiped the memory from from everybody else in the family. So how does that play out in the future? Uh, how does that factor in? Are are the people that were coming for the sword still coming? Is that is that is that something that we need to be looking forward to? I I think uh the the question I have that that you've that you've triggered is he mind blows L as well. Yeah. And uh what what does what do her memories look like on replay if she knows all of past, present, and her future? Yeah. And if she forgets all of that, does how does that type of being that sees all of that stuff start to rebuild a memory, right? Uh if if if, if all of that's gone, is it just is is it intrinsic in, in her? Is it part of like a universal truth? Or does she lose it all? Do they deal with that at all? Or do they just hand wave and expect us not to think about it? That's that is that is it that is yeah. an even bigger question. So But that but that's to to me that that is interesting because we that we asked what the uh, last week or the week before, uh where Rick and L like starting things in motion uh, of you know where what what is the plot wise like the main the main plot and we asked well if if rick doesn't he doesn't process information as l does how did he how does he you know strategize or whatever and yeah. we talked about of course we talked about watchmen uh old Ozy, ozymandias but this could be an explanation or at least like a like a hint about how he figures anything out if he has a uh memory of l's i don't know we'll see in, in the next we'll episode. see we'll see we get to find out in a few days when, when the new episode comes out <laughs> um overall despite my confusion um i did i did like this episode i thought i thought there were um a lot of interesting and funny bits uh <laughs> well i think i think we talked about all of them uh minus the uh the freeze frames uh in the fight scenes where uh as, as they were fighting with like the weapons like they would do these freeze frames where like it got like really sketchy kind of and like looked like almost pencil drawn um mm-hmm. with a little bit more detail i i really liked that that effect i thought it was it was a cool look for for some of the fight scenes um any other bits that stood out to you or things that things that you liked yeah, I, I think I think I think we talked about him. That that fourth wall breaking was was the real highlight for me. Yes, 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 yes. Um, talked kind of best and worst already. Uh, for me, just getting confused about nonlinear storytelling is is tough. <laughs> um, but but one of my favorite things or the best parts of the episode, uh, is is that entire scene or sequence where, uh, Rick is training Jerry not to be a loser. Uh, through through monster attacks, that weird inflation crushing machine, <laughs> yeah. and, and what I like to call the pun punishment device, where it's just <laughs> Jerry making a bunch of like bad pun dad joke things, uh, and some weird tentacle <laughs> thing that's just kind of torturing him as as it's happening. So, yeah, I thought that was funny. Uh, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I over, o- overall I. I, I like the episode. Um, maybe I didn't love the episode, but I, but I, but I enjoy, I enjoyed it well enough. Um, and it, it feels like the episodes as they go on, 
uh, I I enjoy them a little bit more than the like. One like, are we are we starting to get into a sort of, an I don't want to call it expectation management, but like just like a. Like we get what the vibe of the anime kind of is more now that we've seen several of these episodes. So as as we catch a new one, um, we kind of understand more of what what we should be looking for, and so then it's easier to appreciate the things that are there. Are you are you asking me? Is, yeah, is that? Yeah, I think I think that's that is a little bit the case for me. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, but for chance, right? Uh, for chance. It might all. It might also be uh, what's that? What's that disorder where you're a, you know, you're a you're a captive, and then you start Stockholm empathizing syndrome. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it's maybe it's one of those things uh, where like maybe I'm just starting to relate to my captor uh, <laughs> a little bit. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I, yeah, you know, death to America. I get it. Yeah, that's cool. You know, things like. <laughs> Maybe not that. I mean, I mean, yeah, just you're you're institutionalized. Yeah, Brooks, Brooks, and I, ha- Brooks Hadlin knew it. Zitten Wanaheo or whatever. Say uh, <laughs> You remember the name of the town, right? I I watched the Shawshank Redemption last night with, with Chelsea. Get out of here! I love that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because and here's a, it's funny you we we were talking about. You watched it last night and you couldn't remember the name of the town. Right. Because I'm not I'm not Mexican, so why why do I remember a Mexican town name? Zio Um it's a it's a Mexican fishing village. I know, I know it is, Brandon. <laughs> um, so Chelsea's in a a cinema class right now, and they watched Shawshank Redemption, and so she wanted to watch it with me because she has a couple of questions about uh the film. One of them is, is the film nonlinear storytelling? And I, I would argue, well, actually, no, the question is like, why is the film nonlinear storytelling? And I would argue that it's by and large, not a nonlinear story. Uh, other, there's like a couple of like flashbacks, but that doesn't make it nonlinear necessarily. Sure. Right. Yeah. Like this, this episode, nonlinear, like it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's going back and forth. That's like a, a conceit of it. Uh, well, but when Red is talking, he's narrating. All that's going chronologically. Uh, the only time that it goes kind of flashback is when the one dude shows up saying, "Like, yeah, like I had a, a prison roommate of yours, and he he admitted to the murder." Uh, and and the very beginning with which it's showing how uh, Dufresne went to prison. I I think there's there's an aspect because when. Um, when they're looking for Andy Dufresne in his cell, and they, the the warden rips the poster off, and he finds oh. Andy's tunnel. Right, that kicks off a new sequence where Andy Andy has escaped. Right, we we are linear up to that point, but what we have missed throughout all of the movie is seeing how Andy is planning and and executing his escape. That kicks off an explanation where we start to see how Andy using the rock hammer chips away a little bit. And then, so then he starts getting these posters to cover up the tunnel that he's building. And then we see how he's leaving pieces of his tunnel out in the yard every day. And then how he gets involved with the tax stuff. And, and, and we see all the elements of his plan played out after, after we've already seen that he's escaped. And then, and then it comes back around to that point again, where we see the same scene of of the warden ripping the the, the poster away, and that kind of takes us back to that moment. So, um, yeah. And so, and I, I so can, professor, I can agree. in conclusion, I can I can agree with that, but it is a it is a visual do- device for the the viewer. By and large, that movie is not told in a nonlinear fashion. We're getting we're getting flashbacks and where Red is understanding. Okay, you know, uh, welcome anyway, to the Shawshank for Redemption to our Rick cast. And Morty podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so Travis, any other thoughts? Because I have I have our segment of the week. Uh, once once you have some listeners, Jorsons and short outs. I think I think that's it for this episode. If you have other okay. thoughts on this episode, or if we got anything wrong, if you think we got anything wrong, 
uh, hit us up on our socials, send us an email, uh, and we will short you out in the very next episode. Brandon, what do you what do you got for this? Uh, the <laughs> the the listener suggestions from your friend at work. <laughs> Jeff Bowles bringing us the I've never seen Rick and Morty, but I'm watching the anime segment of the week. A uh, couple questions, Travis. Shitlord, a court character. Um, that is uh, that's that's the phone. That's what's on Jerry's or uh, Rick's phone when when Nimbus calls. Oh, uh, <laughs> shitlord. Uh, no, yeah, Mr. Nimbus is a is not a core character, but no, he's a. He's a big cameo, he's, I guess. He's he's, he's a beloved cameo. He's he's got he's got big knee seeks energy. Yeah, like and like I've... shows up in one episode and then feels more important than he actually is. Also, a big old cod piece, uh, Craven the Jerry. Uh, he 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 put that, which is you know, that's good. It's good. It's like Craven the Hunter, but instead it's, it's Craven the Jerry. Also an idiot. Um, you don't have to ask. Yeah, no. Uh, he is he's a more. Jerry. He is a cherry. He's more competent, but you know, he's Definitely. still still cherry. How regular is fourth wall breaking? Uh, how often do they break it and change animation when they jump dimensions? Uh, we talked a little bit about that about the the animation. That was very fourth wall. Like they're not going to. They're just making a comment how they don't want to do that because it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, I would say it was it the season four premiere where um where they split time. Right. Or they and then like they're 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 splitting the screen as they're like the Schrodinger's. Uh, yeah. No, Rick's. That's that. that's that's season. That's season two. Dog. Dang, it is season two. Oh, wow. <laughs> if, only there was like a, so if only there was like a, a seven season box set DVD <laughs> release that I could. Anyway. um, Yeah, I felt like that was a situation where they. They put a lot of work into additional animation to to play into an effect like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Rick seems more aggressively caring than what I know of the original series. Or is it typical of Rick to play nice as a ploy to get what he wants? In this case, the sword of stealing or sealing. Yes. The, the, you, you, is is he aggressively more caring uh, than in this in this series than he is in the main series? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I think he's more a, a little bit more abrasive in in the the original series, but he can he can definitely, uh, I don't know, be be kind to get what he wants. Yeah. 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 I I, I don't feel like this this particular incarnation. Is that right? I don't. Whatever. I don't know if this this version of of Rick is as I don't think it's a ploy. Uh, although all the the mind bendery stuff feels kind of like classic Rick manic. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, last last uh, two two more questions. Um. Well, actually, no. This isn't a question. It's just a comment. This episode felt very episodic, like they made all the introductions in the first half of the season, gave the regulars all of the Easter eggs and are finally getting down to regular Rick and Morty, which is kind of lame for the series. That's, that's his, that's his commentary on it. That's, that's viewer. That's viewer thoughts. That's viewer, viewer thought. This is like well, actual these short thoughts hours. are, do not represent the thoughts of interdimensional RSS <laughs> or the apathetic enthusiasm, enthusiasm podcast network. They don't necessarily, yeah. they may, but yeah. they, but we won't admit one way or the other. And Any then finally, well, to people living or dead. Uh, <laughs> What the fuck is that stinger? Is his, his actual last question. Yeah, Travis, you should watch some mind blowers, my guy. Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 interesting. Morty's mind blowers is, is one of the the great clip show episodes of of Classic. the series. Classic. So yeah, that's one of those episodes, uh, Jeff. You should go check out yeah, if you have not. Yeah. Which I know you haven't. Available because... streaming on Max. <laughs> and next day. Uh, <laughs> With right. subtitles. Yes. Okay. Well, Travis, that's that's all. That's all I've got. Uh, you know, I I, I just want to say this uh, to our fans, to fans of the show, fans of the anime, fans of our podcast. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for being on this this adventure through nonlinear storytelling. What I was trying to point out this is this is part of the meta gag, Travis. That's why I was talking about Green Day 
and going to see in Smashing Pumpkins because Smashing I saw Smashing Pumpkins back in like 2018 or so and they were they were the headliners and they were they were really really good and I was like oh my god like I I didn't realize I knew so many Smashing Pumpkins songs and then but I really enjoyed them they opened up for Green Day which I think is is kind of kind of weird right because I feel like Smashing Pumpkins is a better kind band than than Green Day but Green Day were the were the headliners but the thing about the thing that I was really annoyed with Green Day was they played Dookie all the way through and American Idiot all the way through and but they they started the show by doing we are the champions they 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 played just the the album version of we are the champions and then throughout the concert billy joe armstrong was like oh trying to get the crowd to go oh it, it felt very cringy it was very very cringy um and i don't want that to happen to rick and morty the anime i don't want it to be a, a greatest hits of of easter eggs where we just we they, they force a hey oh hey oh and come on, Los Angeles, it's great to be here. Put your hands up like 50 times. I, I can't even like on both. I need more than my my 10 fingers and toes to to tell you how many times he said, get your hands up and clap. Like, shut up, Billy Joe. Just play the music. Stop trying to be Freddie Mercury. And that's what I love about Rick and Morty. So thank you all for listening. We appreciate you. Thanks for being fans uh, and, and and being a part of this with us. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. We'll see you next time. I'm, I'm Travis. He's Brandon. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs>